Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my first set of cards using the October 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, get a couple tips along the way, and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're interested in downloading the free printable, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I debuted the new sheet load of cards, the October 2020 edition. And in that video, I shared with you how you can download this file for free if you're a subscriber to my channel, and I gave you the first look at my first eight cards I created for the month. Today, I'm gonna stop by and show you how I made those. Now don't forget, today is also the day that my collaborators are gonna be sharing their cards. All of their YouTube channels, Instagram accounts, and blogs are linked below. So once you're done here, I hope you'll go visit them, see what they've created, and leave them some love. Before I get started on the process, I wanted to show you some of the products that I'll be using today. If I do add anything later on the video, I will be sure to let you know. Now, as always, if I leave you with any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. So of course, I'll be using the sheet load of cards printable and this month, if you follow the instructions, you'll get eight completed cards. For my sentiments today, I'll be using a couple stamps from this set. It's called Grand Garden and it's by Gina K Designs. If you notice in the background there, it has been autographed. I was lucky enough to meet Gina at a local scrapbook store when I took a class with her. She is just as sweet in person as she is on the internet. I'll be stamping my sentiment in one of her inks. This is the Blue Lagoon. I thought it matched the blue in my paper well. If you saw yesterday's video, you already know that I switched up my cards a little bit. This month, I used a heavy weight vellum for my card bases versus like a usual white card stock that I might use. I like the way this gives just a little peek at the pattern paper on the inside. I have out one piece of white cardstock now for some matting. Later you will see that I pull out some more white, so there's room on the inside of my card for my personal message. The sketch and supply list called for one more piece of cardstock, but I decided to use one of the pages from my pattern paper pack that normally I wouldn't use. I really like this blue up here, so I'm going to use an 8.5 by 11 section instead of a piece of colored cardstock. All of my papers today came from the Woodland and Wings Hot by Pad from Michaels. For the two pattern papers that the sheet load calls for, I chose this pink wood grain and then this mushroom or toadstool pattern paper. I'm not sure what those are. Let me know below. Let's get crafty. Like most months, I'm going to start the process today by cutting my papers and I'm going to stack my two pattern papers on top of each other and follow the cutting diagram to cut these down. Now when I do stack these and cut, I do make sure to hold the paper really firmly and before I do each cut, I make sure to line up those papers nicely and hold it right flat against the guard. And don't forget, since you can find all of the dimensions on the free printable from yesterday's video, I won't be sharing a lot of those during this video. Here's my first deviation from the sketch and supply list this month. I'm going to use the top of this piece of pattern paper in place of one of my card stocks. So the first thing I did was cut the top down to 8.5 by 11 inches and then I cut it into the final size for the card stock mat. This just shows you that you can make sheet load your own to make it fit your supplies. 
Next, I got out a piece of my layering white cardstock and I cut that per the instructions on the printable. I have a lot of questions about, oh, what cardstock do you use? And honestly, I could just go to Hobby Lobby whenever they have the paper studio paper half off. I buy their packages of regular white cardstock and their heavyweight white cardstock and the heavyweight I use for my card bases. Now I will tell you I made the mistake of getting extra heavyweight cardstock one time and you really have to score that stuff if you want to fold it because it is super heavy. So I like a good deal. For this next step, I got out another piece of that layering white cardstock, but this is a step that you would not necessarily have to do. I will be using this white cardstock on the inside of my vellum card base just so I have a place to write my personal message that isn't on pattern paper. So again, if you're not doing a clear or vellum card base, this would be a step you could skip. I ended up cutting these pieces just slightly smaller, I think an eighth of an inch smaller than the blue mat that I had cut out. Finally for the cutting, I got out four pieces of my 36 pound vellum and I cut each of them in half to four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall. Now to avoid the fold cracking, which vellum in this weight usually does, I pulled out my score board, put a score line right down the center, and then I folded each of them in half so I ended up with eight card bases. So I would know where I could stamp my sentiment, I started to put a little bit of my cards together. The small square piece of pattern paper got matted with the small white square, and then this got adhered to the top of the blue piece, so there was an even border on the top, left, and right. This way then, I will know exactly at the bottom where I can stamp my sentiment. I finished all of these, and then once those were done, it was time to get out my misty and do some stamping. For my sentiments, I decided on the you've been on my mind and so many of my smiles begin with you. Because I will be using two, I went ahead and I'm going to set these up just all at the same time so I only have to stamp four times. I did place one of each piece in the bottom left and the bottom right hand corner of my misty. That way if it gets pulled up with the stamp, I know I can just realign it snug right down there in that corner. Once I have those set up, I'm going to flip my misty around and make it easier to ink up, and then I'm going to start stamping those sentiments. I do this until I have stamped all eight of my card fronts. I waited a long time to get a misty. I saved up for this for a while, and I have to say it was one of my best investments. It makes stuff like this so easy to mass produce. Here is a look at all eight of those pieces stamped with the sentiments. Now that all of the individual pieces were ready, it was time to start putting all of the cards together. The first thing I did was add adhesive to the back of the largest piece of pattern paper, and this got adhered to the inside of the card. Now yours will be different if you don't have a vellum card base, you'll actually put that on the card front. Once I had that on the inside, I then added adhesive to my stamp sentiment piece and placed that on the front center of the card. Now you will see that I did go ahead and add the piece of white cardstock on the inside for my personal message. I just put that on top of the pattern paper once I had that centered. I continued the same process until I had all eight cards put together and ready for a little embellishing. To add a little sparkle today, I got out two different shades of pink gems. The darker pink I'm going to use when the mushroom pattern paper is on the front, and the lighter pink I will use for that pink wood grain paper. I just placed three on the front of each card, kind of in a triangle pattern, so it wrapped around my sentiment, drawing your eye to the middle portion or the focal point. Once again, continued this process until all eight cards had embellishing, and here is a look at the final finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using the October 2020 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. 
Now don't forget to go visit all of my collaborators who are linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.